in the wide world of martial arts, there's a whole bunch of different styles. There's some that focus on striking, some on grappling, some on choking, some on weapons. But in those styles, there are just some things that universally exist. Case in point, the straight blast. That exists in karate, Wing Chun, and boxing. And the reason that exists in those three very different styles is because it works. In today's video, we're gonna go over the various versions of the straight blast and why I think it's the most effective move not only for fighting, but also for self-defense. If that sounds interesting to you, make sure you're subscribed and you have notifications turned on, and let's get started. So there's a thing a lot of self-defense martial arts instructors like to do, and I'm pretty guilty of it myself, that being convincing people that they're not good at violence. And that's true, but it's also not true. It's true in the sense that human beings tend to not know how to be good at being violent, but we are very good at violence. I can take someone with no training and say, hit me in the face, and you're all gonna do basically the exact same thing. You're gonna take your hand from position A and swing it to position B, position C, so on, so forth. But if we have to cover distance, people also understand that the right hand and the left foot are tied together. Meaning, if I wanna strike Tracy from this far away, I won't typically step with that same side. I'll instead create rotational power by stepping with my left foot as I swing my right hand. The problem with that is, if I take a circular arc with my arm and Tracy takes a straight line with her arm, her hand is gonna get to me before mine gets to her. That's just basic geometry. And if you wanna know more about it, we go over it in this video right here. But the straight blast takes that same philosophy of covering aggressive distance, but uses it in a straight line. So starting out, let's talk about the boxing straight blast. Boxing straight blast is pretty straightforward. If I'm here with Tracy, I'm gonna get in my good boxing stance, take a step with my left foot, throw my left hand. Boom, take a step with my right foot. Right hand, left foot, right hand. Bum, 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 bum. Just walking down the line. This is the most basic way to do a straight blast, and it's probably the safest way to throw it. Because as I throw my left hand, my right hand is here to guard. As I throw my right hand, my left hand is here to guard. I can move down the line without sacrificing too much defense. The problem is, I don't actually cover that much distance as I move. If I'm here with Tracy and I wanna cover distance, I can only step as far as my same side foot allows me to. Meaning if I step too far, I'm off balance here, I'm off balance here. So I can really only step a couple inches at a time. Not that too many inches is that important, so the safest or most efficient way to throw the straight blast is with the boxing blast. Just walking forward, throwing a jab and a cross. This is something you practice on day one of almost any striking class. If you learn to throw a jab and a cross, you can do a version of the straight blast. But it's not the only way to straight blast. I think the masters, or at least the people that talk about it the most, are the Wing Chun Jeet Kune Do crowd. And I think they have a very unique way of throwing the straight blast, but it's got a whole bunch of problems on its own, um, and we'll talk about that in a second. But how to do it. Now, I wanna say real quick, I've taken like less than a week of Wing Chun in my day, and I would say even less time in Jeet Kune Do, so I'm not an expert of this by any means, but even experts at Wing Chun suck at it, so who cares? I'm gonna be here in my stance. Now, instead of punching full all the way out, I'm gonna have my elbows in the center line, and my hands are gonna travel one over the other. The goal is less to be pistoning in and out at my opponent, and more like machine gun punching. Interestingly enough, they call this chain punching. As one hand leaves the target, the other one's on its way. So it's repetitive concussive force, but the way it's delivered is like one quick, sharp explosion of punches. The idea is if Tracy's got her arms out like this, like in a hallway, I wanna punch inside that hallway. As she gets narrower and narrower, I should still be able to punch her here. If I'm going for boxing punching, obviously if she closes that hallway on me, eventually I'm gonna end up too tight to punch her, right? So Wing Chun punching is straight line down the middle. So the footwork on this um, can be like the boxing where you tie the left hand and the left foot, right hand and the right foot, but because your hands are traveling faster than the rest of your body, you end up looking kind of ridiculous if you try to tie your feet to that. So instead, you want to think about your feet constantly moving or gliding across the ground as your hands chain punch into the opponent, which looks like this. I'm gonna get more forward heavy, ready to explode off the back leg. I'm gonna push off my back foot. Again, we're here. I let my feet push me forward as my hands rotate one over the other into the target. Here's my issue with the Wing Chun version of the straight blast. Uh, can you put that on your chest, please? So I'm right here. I'm gonna straight blast down the line, right here, boom, 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 boom. Very effective, she hits the ground, I win the fight, right? Now, this time around, I want you to move in any direction but the Y axis, okay? And here we go. Because there's no rotation happening in my upper body, if Tracy moves offline, go ahead, 
it's very hard for me to correct. Because yes, I'm creating a train going straight down the line. And if she's in the way of that train, go ahead, stand right there. If she's in the way, yes, very dangerous. But if she has any sense of 3D space and moves anywhere, there, I'm off balance. Now, yes, I'm not an expert of this version of the straight blast, but fundamentally, that's a giant flaw. I am focusing so much on creating straight line attack here that if my opponent is smart enough to move anywhere out of the way or controls distance enough to take a big step back, just stay out of the way, I'm always gonna be off balance. I'm always gonna miss my targets. Now, we're gonna move on to what I think is my favorite version of the straight blast, the karate blitz. So there's a lot of reasons that I like the karate blitz, but mainly, I like the ability to cover distance. If I'm about two arms distance away from Tracy, there's no world where I can hit her without taking a step towards her. But, like you just did, if she sees me take that step, she'll be able to cover that distance just as easily. Now, instead of making a big obvious movement with my lead foot, I make a different obvious movement with my rear foot. My rear foot steps through, boom, my punch comes right down the line. Again, I step through into the opposite stance, there's my strike. Take another step in the opposite stance, there I am again. Unlike the Wing Chun version, where I stay completely squared up with my opponent, my step through allows me to rotate into each punch. Instead of this being a jab cross, every single punch is a cross. So while I can cover a lot of distance with a step through with the rear leg, there's a reason that we're told not to do that as we start striking. Because while yes, this creates a lot of rotational power, it's also very obvious to Tracy. So I don't normally tell people to do that. Instead what I have them do is set it up with a shuffle step. So instead, I'm gonna bring my right foot up here, shift my weight forward, and fall into my right hand. Then, as this retracts, I'll step forward with the right leg, boom, step forward with the left leg, here and here. So now, I'm using my hand to disguise my footwork. My hand distracts her as I start to step forward. And really, that's true of all the straight blasts here, whether we're talking the boxing blast, the Wing Chun blast, or the karate blitz. If you can get their attention up top somewhere else, they're not gonna see the feet covering distance. So, one more time, even if I'm, let me get you right there. Even if I'm here with Tracy, too far away to hit her, as long as she thinks I might, all of a sudden I covered that distance. One more time, I'm here. So we talked about the what and the how of our various straight blasts. Now let's talk about the why and the when. Because like I said, I don't think any one version is better than the other. I just think there's different times and different applications for each one. For example, the boxing blast I think is really good if Tracy's backing away when I'm punching at her. So if I'm here with Tracy and I throw my jab and she runs away, obviously the easiest thing to do is bring my right foot, throw my right hand, throw my left foot, boom, here, right there. No matter where she goes, I'm able to follow her in my stance, able to throw any subsequent strike after that. The Karate Blitz is kind of in the same vein, but instead of it being used when Tracy's running away, it's more like when Tracy's staying away. If she's completely out of my range, and every time I step towards her, she moves back, the Karate Blitz is a great way to cover distance quickly. So let's say you're dealing with someone who stays just out of your range and they start to disrespect you. They put their hands down, they start mocking you. In just one step, I can go from this far away to now here. It's a great way to cover distance. So again, if we're, or this actually works the other direction. If I like staying out of range, every time she tries to move towards me, I move out of range. And while she might think she can't hit me, that doesn't mean I can't hit her. Because with a simple step forward at the rear leg, boom, there I'm in range, there I'm in range. So like I said, the blitz is great both offensively and defensively. Last one, the Wing Chun straight blast. Like I said earlier, I don't think this is necessarily the one to use to cover distance, but I don't think that was ever the point. I think this was meant to be more of a counter maneuver than it was an offensive maneuver. What I mean by that is if I'm here with Trace and she throws, uh, let's say a one two at me, she gives me the one two, go ahead, boom, boom, and I come off angle here, from this side, I can take that straight blast and destroy her. Instead of having to enter and close the distance from here, which is very easy to get out of the way from, if I'm standing here, it's much harder for Tracy to evade. So the goal is not to use this to cover distance, but to cover distance so I can use this. So now we're gonna have Tracy do this. So what I want you to do is uh, take a step back. I'm gonna do this twice. Just run towards me as hard as you can, boxing blast, Wing Chun blast, karate blitz, whichever you want. Throw it as hard as you can right into my chest, okay? Go. There we go. Okay, what I want you to do this time, sit your weight down, big deep inhale. When you're ready, exhale, just rock, run forward, okay? Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> 
that was way different. Did that feel different? Yeah. Way more aggressive, right? Yeah. You sat your weight down, you knew what you were doing, you calmed yourself down, and you rushed forward. Now, in a real situation, you don't necessarily get to have that moment of, here's what we're going to do, right? But that's what we're training for, being able to turn that on at a moment's notice. So you actually just said something that was really poignant, and I think a lot of people could benefit from it. Can you say it again? My punches felt really sloppy on right. that. And they did. They, your punches weren't great. But the thing is, they don't need to be great because it still worked, right? You still knocked me over. You still didn't get hit. You still accomplished what you need to accomplish. This is a problem I see a lot of people deal with, and it's not a crippling problem. It's just something we need to get over. People are obsessed with their technique, and while that's important, aggression and commitment are important -er. As long as your punch actually gets to your opponent and accomplishes what you want it to accomplish, then the technique, quote unquote, was good, mm. right? Like, Technically speaking, your punch should have the palm turned over, slight bend in the arm, shoulder up, right? Mm -hmm. But if you manage to hit me with, let's say, your fist up like this, your shoulder down, and you're like this, but it knocks me out, then what's the problem? It's the most efficient way to throw your punches, and it's something you want to have a good base of, but at the end of the day, a punch is a punch, right? As long as you manage to hit the guy in the face or in the gut or whatever, don't worry about how good the technique is. So. Yes, technique is important, and I really do stress that you should have good technique at all times, but good is relative. All that being said, you guys, this has been Rob and Tracy from Combat Self-Defense. If you want to show support to the channel, go ahead and open up the description box down there at the bottom. There's a whole bunch of links and codes to get you some of the best gear on the planet. And if you want to help the channel even more, please be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe here on YouTube. I don't respond to comments on Facebook or Reddit or anywhere else. Comment here, help me grow. All that being said, I want to thank you guys for all the hard work. Thank you for the hard work yet to be done, and I'll see you next time.